Hi, I am Chad Anderson of Filmmaker U, filling in for Gordon Burkell. At Filmmaker U, we create courses for film professionals to deepen and diversify their skill set. You can learn more on filmmakeru.com or follow us on Instagram at, at filmmaker underscore you. Every week we interview a film professional, and this week we are pleased to be joined by film editor uh, Laurent Seneschal, whose work includes Victoria, uh, 10,000 Nights in the Jungle, and most recently his Oscar nomination for Anatomy of a Fall, which I've just seen, which I'm still trying to process, uh, kind of amazing. I really want to talk to you about this film. Welcome to the show, Laurent. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you to have me. It's, uh, it's great to, to, have the, yeah, to be able to talk with you. It's great. I want to first ask you about how you got started. I, I think in, in, in film, it's really fascinating that people can go in so many different directions, whether it be a cinematographer, whether it be an editor, whether it be a, a production designer or whatever. What drew you to editing? In fact, um, at the beginning, I, I, at the very first beginning, when I was uh, wondering what to do, uh, I knew it was going to be around sound and I wanted to be a sound engineer. But um, uh, after that, uh, I, yeah, I had this dream of, of becoming a director myself. <laughs> and uh, uh, for me, editing, uh, when I was at the university, was um, a way to learn how to direct a movie, how to how it was working, because it's a great place editing. Everything is coming there, and you are like um, uh, making the last choices about every choices ever uh, that um, yeah everybody has already done to make a movie. So for me, it was uh, at first the way to learn, but um, I start with the short films, and then. Uh, because it was working, those I was working with uh, made feature films, and then I became an editor, you know. <laughs> I grew up in a household in the projects in East Harlem. There's a program at WNET, the public television station, to get more people of color behind the camera, in the editing room, doing sound, writing scripts. When they put me in a dark room, and they showed me how to use the splicer and the rewinds. I felt this big sigh of relief. This sense of, wow, I found my space. The editing part of filmmaking is the real nuts and bolts of what makes films come to life. You can ask Spielberg, you can ask Tarantino, you can ask Spike. When you sit here, this is where the proof is in the pudding. I'm Sam Pollard. And this is my class on documentary editing. You mentioned that the idea that uh, you you kind of have the final say in terms of the, the film process because it's you know you're in post production and so it comes down to it's already been shot it's already been created and the story's already been written and the actors have performed and now you're doing the final point of this um, in relation to that um, you have a, a long standing relationship with um, Justine Triet uh, and have made other films with her and been her editor for other films um, in terms of that um, how much freedom are you given to kind of say, hey, I think this should be done this way, or, you know, this edit comes in this way, particularly in, in Anatomy of the Fall? Well, um, uh, at first, uh, what I can say is that my my vision of editing is, um, is uh, that it's a place where you really can, with, of course, the trust of the director, but you really can redesign all that you have to redesign, because our job is to tell the better story we can tell with the material, you know. So um, for me, uh, for when I'm working on each movie I, I already done, it was um, not uh, like a pleasure to to question a lot all the the script, uh, um, you know, subject issues and all that. But I think it's really useful to to do that, but with the director in order to um, refine everything. So uh, for Anatom Anatomy of a Fall, it was just the same. And Justine is very uh, specific. It's, she, she's uh, amazing about freedom. She's really like not um, uh, following the plan. She she's uh, an academic. She's she's really like destroying all the uh, the previous ideas. If she is finding a good uh, acting somewhere, she's going. She she's already um, um, starting to. To want to put it in the movie, even if it's it can be contradictory. 
So we are like uh, really, really, really um, uh, putting the, the, not the script aside totally because that's a trial uh, uh, movie. So we have to, to stay stuck uh, in the, um, yeah, in the, the, the course of it, in the dynamics of the trial. But um, for each scene, uh, she is free and I, she asked me to be free to like find new ideas to redesign to invent a lot of uh, new new scenes even new scenes you know so um it's like um really artisanal and uh, uh, we we are really shaking everything <laughs> in editing in the editing room you know yeah that's really nice that you can actually you know go back and say hey this this needs to be changed and we're not we're not you know locked down to any decision that was made you know months ago that you can kind of just decide hey this is working and that's really i think where the where some of the beauty of the art form comes from is that ability to adapt to those kind of situations as you suggested um i thought it was really interesting uh in the beginning of the film particularly there's an idea that i noticed the a lot of the dialogue in the beginning um you're showing something else you're 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 showing b-roll over people talking and we don't even see the people talking it's a close-up of books on a shelf or a close-up of a, of a picture frame or it's a close-up of something else it's this idea that like we're kind of i don't know intruding i don't know if that's the right word but but there's an idea that that there's something else we should be looking at and this is happening sort of there's a conversation happening but we're kind of i don't, I don't know how did that come about and and, it, and what was the what was the intent of that uh, are you talking about the whole movie or only the beginning? Uh, particularly in the beginning, I noticed. I, I noticed it pregnant in the beginning, but it happens in some other places as well, where we just, where we kind of, it's like, hey, look over here while this is happening, because we're going to close up on something that may or may not be irrelevant, but it's kind of, you know, it's more of a B-roll kind of thing. Mm -hmm. In fact, um, it's uh, really important for, for Justine um, that we pay attention to the sound. She's... Um, even if she is not putting, for instance, um, score music in in her movies, uh, she is uh, not um, like not listening. She, she's really into sound, and it is uh, really important for her that the audience um, is um, working a lot with us. And uh, the way to do to to have uh, the audience like starting to think and to to dance with us is often. Um, uh, asking them to hear something and to see something else. <laughs> and it's really important that uh, uh, it doesn't feel too much uncomfortable, you know, but it, we have to we have to play. And um, this uh, kind of um, differences uh, between what you are seeing and what you are where you are with the eyes and wh what you are hearing is a really a good um, tool for us to to play with the audience. And in, for the beginning of this movie, the, the opening scene is so much about that, you know, because um, the father, his body is the sound, is the music and the, all the, the work he's doing really upstairs. And um, uh, all his character is like music in the beginning and we you are not going to see him uh, for a long time, you know, and um, well, this is a way to to say even the, the very beginning is the opening shot is a black shot is we are in the dark and we, mm -hmm. we hear the voice of Sandra Euler saying, what do you want to know? And she's talking to the student, but in fact, she's like talking to the audience. What do you want to know about me? And uh, you are already as an audience um, starting to to understand that in this movie, you will have to be really careful about what is said and and you are going to to work and find and find out things, you know? Yeah, it's really interesting. It, there's a there's a literary component to it. Uh, it felt it felt like um, I studied in I studied Hemingway in college and it's it felt like reading Ernest Hemingway. Um, it felt like there was yeah, it, it, well, because there was this idea in Hemingway that there was this idea that like, you know, I'm going to talk about all of this thing. And this one sentence is going to be really, really important. And all the rest of this is going to be just description, description, description. And then and then we we kind of kind of smack you with the with the one thing that you were going to be like oh yeah That's he, great. like and that there was still there was that a little bit of that you talk about um the idea of of playing with sound uh, i think i don't i didn't get a sense that there was a traditional soundtrack to this it's daniel playing piano in so much of this and and the the soundtrack is 
uh, Daniel practicing these classical pieces of music in there, um, which is which is such an interesting approach for adding, you know, a soundtrack to adding a music bed into this work. Um, how did that idea come about? Um, I, I, to be honest, uh, Justine uh, never used composers for uh, her previous movies. Uh, maybe sometimes she herself played some uh, slight notes <laughs> uh, for uh, her movies, but um, in fact, uh, she is using uh, like um, music and already already recorded. You know, um, I don't know the, the right word for this in, in in English. Sorry, sorry for my English. It's sometimes uh, that's okay. <laughs> okay, but um, uh, so. But music is really important for her, and that's why she's not using a composer or or too much music in in that kind of movies because um, she she doesn't want the music to um, an an alien movie to, uh, music to to yeah to to like come and take all the meanings all the dynamics uh, and say re really um, uh, you know precise things because. She, the ambiguity is really important for Justine uh, in this movie in particular, of course, because Sandra Euler is built around this idea. But um, in general, she's interested in when life is complex, when movies are, um, for us, uh, starting with a thriller movie was like a, a vehicle, a way to bring, to lead the audience towards uh, complexity. We, we wanted to, to have a, uh, this uh, relationship with the audience. Uh, you are going to see a thriller movie, but you are going also to follow and to to love a character that you will really never know at all, <laughs> even yeah. at the end. And um, uh, and I don't know if I really answer the question, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, what can I say? Uh, can you can you can you tell? No, me I just thought. It I thought it was just really interesting because I, I remember taking notes while watching this movie. I sometimes do that, especially when I'm going to do an interview. And I remember taking notes being like, is, is this sound of this piano playing this classical piece, Chopin or whatever it was, um, was, is, is this in the reality of the movie or is this in just for us, the audience? And I couldn't, I, I was like, at okay. some point I was like, he kept playing and I was like, wait, is this just, is this just music bed or is he yeah, still yeah. playing or is this he still is our play? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. This is our play. In fact, we are using only diegetic sources, uh, diegetic music. And uh, yeah. for, uh, for us, um, since the beginning, it was clear that there won't be score music because we wanted music to be like characters. The, the pimp, yeah. pimp is for the father, is really his body. And he is yeah. coming uh, with the, pro the trial is starting with pimp again. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, there is this structure thing that is uh, re rebeginning. You know, uh, the 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 movie restarts with the trial and with pimp. And for the piano, it was a way, um, very rich way for us to make the boy exist uh, before mm -hmm. he is becoming the main character at the very end of the movie. He's beginning yeah. the one who is acting and <laughs> and uh, really thinking and making choices. And so, but during the two first hours it's very long we had we had him play and play in a way that we we could feel that he was um, uh, involved in it and growing up and uh, uh, also yeah for the title sequence for instance we don't know him yet but we used it was an editing idea to use the piano uh, like we also starting piano mm -hmm. um, very awkward style uh, <laughs> to play um and the last uh the, even the, the photo the pictures were was not supposed to be like that it was supposed to be on the car a very long shot on the on the car of the lawyer coming to sandra uh but we we had this idea that with uh, pictures of the family that we almost invented because it's a mix of uh, pictures from the actors that we with BFX on it, you know, to to mm -hmm. create this past with them. To it was the, the, it was a way to create empathy with this family and also the piano. It's like you are already in an intimate climate with uh, the character, the main characters. Of course, yeah. it was a killing maybe, but they, they you you are invited to 
be close to them, to be in their rooms, in their piano beginnings, in their photographs and all this, you know. It's interesting. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you about the photo, mo the, the montage of photos, the family photos. It does a really interesting thing for, you know, giving a little backstory to the family. And, and basically, it gives a whole history lesson almost in just a series of montage. And I'm really, I was really impressed with the way that the editing can just, you know, tell that whole part of the story without anything being said and just the music there. It works really well. And, and what is interesting is that it's one of the maybe the last big uh, ideas that we had. It was very at the end of the editing process that we we had this question how to how to put the audience in the right place in the right uh, mood to start, and uh, we didn't have uh, so much uh, leverage, and it, it was great to have this at the end. Uh, yeah. You mentioned. Um, uh, uh... Kind of jokingly that 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 you know looking for English words for things. I wanted to ask you about the 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 transition between French and English in this film. Um, it it frequently went back and forth. Um, there's and I think that's in the relationship to developing Sandra as an outsider. But uh, there's there's a lot of conversations about you know speaking French or speaking English or speaking French or speaking English and. It felt like there's a perfect, you know, split of half the movies in French, half the movies in English. Um, uh, do you think that, or how do you think that that contributed to the story, and how was that intended? What is uh, what is interesting is that um, movies as are filled with that kind of things. At the beginning, you have a problem, and the way you are reacting to a problem. Uh, becomes style and becomes the strength of the movie. You know, uh, of course, uh, you have to work for that. But at the beginning, we um, the, the script was written for Sandra Hüller because Justine already uh, knew her, and they were uh, yeah they, they they worked on Sybil yeah yeah in Sybil they they met and worked together and uh, Sandra Hüller was so great and she is still like <laughs> such a huge actress. You know, so. Um, uh, Arthur Harari and Justin Trier, they decided to work uh, the script around her. It was written for her. So um, they knew that she was really fluent in English, but in French it was harder. So um, they started to invent how this couple would be uh, uh, having uh, English as an issue. Uh, it's uh, it's our meeting point. The, 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 the point. That's uh, what uh, the character Sandra Voiter is saying to to the husband during the fight, and um, uh, so English was uh, yeah was becoming uh, part of the subject, part of the the um, the balance uh, or the unbalanced things between uh, between this couple, and it's in the heart of the of the movie because the fight. Uh, between them is uh, in the middle. In the, it's, it's really the the movie in the movie. You know, <laughs> it's mm -hmm. it's a really important scene. It's a, it's really about time, contemporary couples. How are we are we trying to find a balanced life? Uh, what what version of us uh, do you think we are living in? You know, it's yeah. really uh, where, yeah, yeah. where where it, where it's uh, every everything is. Uh, is uh, burning for 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 this movie, and um, um, uh, what I want to say. Oh, sorry, I, I lost my mind. Um, yeah, uh, uh, we found another problem because for financial issues, uh, we had not we had to pay attention to uh, how much English we we were going to have in the movie. You know, <laughs> we, yeah. we needed French to be uh, more than English in the movie. So we had to, yeah, to create things to to find that uh, <laughs> proportions. Yeah, no, I think, but I think it works. I mean, it's a, it's a kind of a happy accident because, you know, the nature of her character is she's she's an outsider. You know, she's been she's been forced to move here, and now she feels like she doesn't belong. And so, her wanting to speak English is kind of a an extension of her as a person because she's you know she she doesn't fit in with the rest of the people who speak French. And in, in the courtroom where it's, oh, it's preferred you speak French, but like, this is my voice. My voice is in English and I don't I don't necessarily belong here or I, I feel, you know, like an outsider. Yeah, um, it doesn't, it doesn't. 
she's trying, she's struggling to, to speak French, but at some point she cannot adapt as much as uh, it would be great for her, for her defense, you know? Yeah. Did, did you find with the character um, in making the film, um, it, it feels like there's a, there's a bit of the, the, the thriller or a bit of the mystery. It's, it's sort of like a whodunit in, you know, mm -hmm. did, is, is she really guilty or is she really not? Um, I don't want I don't want to go through spoilers and I don't want to talk any about the ending or anything. Um, was there an intent in the beginning to say that either she looks innocent, we want her to believe innocent, or we want to believe we want the audience to believe that she's guilty, or do we want to leave this completely ambiguous? Uh, in fact, since the since the beginning, what was clear for for us since the script, even before starting the the editing process, we knew that we um, the, the movie had to go further than this question of uh, guilty, not guilty. Um, uh, we we wanted uh, to to use the thriller and this uh, energy, this uh, pressure, but we, it was uh, um, for us um, uh, not a clever game where you you, you know you, we could have played. Uh, with the audience, uh, like uh, with a very high um, uh, levels, uh, with this uh, guilty. You think she's guilty for 15 minutes, and then no, and then. But it was not our game. We didn't want that. We wanted to, to like uh, dive in complexity with her to be, to be with her, like as if she was only a victim, but um, maintaining uh, doubts around her with slight details and with slight uh, turns, you know? And um, it, it was really um, the main challenge uh, throughout all, the whole movie, throughout the whole editing, to find how um, the audience, were, were to, to, yeah, to build the path of the audience, uh, because the, 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 the road is um, wide to, for the audience to make its own, uh, yeah, uh, its own journey, you know, uh, its own mind and opinion about her, and um, it's you, you, we when we we had some little changes, some little de details changing at the beginning, uh, the whole uh, contract could de you know change, and you you could think that oh, suddenly you think that she's um, manipulative, uh, too much seducive, and. Uh, and no more interesting for long scenes in the in the in the trial when when you you could not sometimes uh, when we were screening the movie with some versions of the beginning of some scene or some scenes that we had to cut uh, at the end um, you you simply could not be there with her there was like uh, no rejection uh, oh, oh, mm -hmm. this is not for me I cannot follow this woman it's boring I know she's guilty or uh, sure. it's so tricky the way she's using her boy and the handicap uh, to seduce the jury. Uh, sometimes we had some really strange screening uh, and we had to, to refine things to, to keep this uh, ambiguity uh, alive, you know. Uh, uh, but it was not um, in order to, 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 to play with the audience um, uh, moral things or uh, you know uh, backgrounds. It was a, a, a way for us to to lead the audience towards complexity. It's really important to understand that because um, complexity is not only about guilty not guilty. It's uh, what is who are my my parents, who are my mother, uh, or who are who is my son. At the end, sure. it's all about this question. And uh, even if we have. Um, most of most of us have uh, really uh, quiet lives, <laughs> quiet lives, <laughs> comparing to this uh, family. Um, we are sharing these uh, human things, you know. Um, you 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 don't really know your relatives, I, I guess. I think it's I think it's um, now hearing you say that. Now hearing you talk about that, um, I had a question about. I don't want to give anything away, and I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, if anyone hasn't seen this yet, I think it's worth seeing. Um, uh, but the ending. Um, so I think in a typical, you know, thriller or in a typical legal drama, uh, there would be a, there would be a, a rigorous court case, a bunch of lawyers, a bunch of talking, there would be a verdict and fade to black. You don't do that. 
and it's somewhat cruel um because i was completely tense you there's another 20 minutes after that where you're just going because i'm waiting for something to happen else that's going to be oh there's a total i was waiting for a twist and i'm mm -hmm. and and i i'm looking at the time on the bottom of my screen wondering here comes the twist here comes i'm like oh she's gonna there's gonna there's gonna be something and you, you, it, I, I felt, I felt, I felt, you mentioned playing with the audience. Um, I felt played with. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I hope it was not too hard. <laughs> it was, it was, I was like, I was like, ah, oh, I was like, cause, cause now I don't know whether, and, and now the next 20 minutes come in and now I don't know whether I'm now rooting for her, rooting against her. And, you know, yeah, the verdict came in and I was, I had to reach a decision. So now it's a whole, now there's a whole, there's like a whole separate movie in those last 20 minutes there. That I'm just that's I would that would have me on the edge of my seat. <laughs> uh, but what what I can say there is that um, I think it's uh, it's great when movies are are like that, but um, and when it works. But uh, Justine is really interested, and it's it's exciting to work with her on this. Um, she's interested in 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 a um, situation where um it's it's becoming the movie that is looking into uh, the audience mind you know you you what your reaction not not uh, yours uh, but yours also uh, the the reaction of every every one in front of uh, the fight in front of the verdict in front of the end it tells a lot about who you are you know and yeah. uh, it says it's interesting to to not to be um, uh, like um, uh, so, some sometimes it's, it can be a bit cynical when when uh, directors are using this uh, thing. We know things, and the audience will never know things. We are like gods, and uh, we are manipulating the audience and the characters. And uh, yeah, we are gods, and we are happy to be gods. It's really not the point here. Um, Justine is not like that. She's for her. She's like so much respecting the audience um, that she doesn't want to push uh, her feelings, even her judgments, uh, uh, on the head of the <laughs> the audience. She wants the audience to be free, and uh, it's hard to do because uh, uh, when you are a, an editor, you need to to drive to close doors and to to you know. Uh, um, condense things and to yeah uh, yeah come to a point uh, every lines are supposed to come to a point and um the point of with just in movies and this one in particular is not a point is um it's like a room where you're invited to feel the complexity of your own life in fact yeah i think you know one of the things i always say is you know i'm i there's movies I, I I like and there's movies I don't like and 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 but what really interests me more is movies that I I don't know like how I feel about them for a week like I sit there and like I'll still be I'll still be debating them in my head of scenes of the movie so like because I feel like I'm more part of the movie in that aspect rather than like oh yeah that was good that was exciting okay cool that was exciting I put in a drawer don't worry about it this I'm gonna be. I don't know about her. And I'm like, there's going to be a debate in my head of, oh, I, sh I didn't like that judge and I didn't like that lawyer and I didn't like, and I, and, but I liked him, but I, I don't know. Maybe he was, maybe that sentence and like, you know, that the so movies that I'm, conf the movies that I'm conflicted about are fascinating to me. And it's just, it's really interesting. Oh, thank um, you. Uh, l lastly, um, or one of the last questions I want to ask you, um, I have to ask you about it. Um, for this, uh, this is the this is the Oscar nomination. Um, this, uh, uh, it's lots of Oscar nom nominations, an Oscar nomination for you as well. Congratulations. Um, uh, did you know going into this that there was gonna be that this was gonna be as huge as it was? Um, you've Absolutely. done other films with with Justine, and but this seems like this is this has reached another level of success. <clears throat> we knew no, 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 not at all. It was quite the contrary actually because um we we knew that the movie the script was so well written and, and catchy and uh, the cast was so uh, great um around sandra Euler and even all the the, the cast the boy milo 
um, um, uh, the, the, the lawyers, the prosecutor. It was so great that we we could feel the the power in it, but we also could um, imagine that it was going to be um, something that is that was going to divide the audience because um, it's 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 so risky to to play sure. that game that we were talking about. <laughs> um, so um, we didn't know that we, we we knew that some some people would really like it. But we imagine that maybe not uh, not it, it was not going to be really broad, you know, uh, because um, we we were pretty sure that we were going to do the movie Justin wanted with uh, something really rough, raw, and like radical in it. Um, but um, uh, we 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 were never thinking about uh, how we, the success that it could be and. Uh, we it was the contrary actually, but when we we were um, selected in Cannes Film Festival and after of course the the, the Palme d'Or, we 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 understood that something was working um, ah. really better than we 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 would have figured out or expected, you know. And after that, uh, for us the 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 yeah the skyline was uh, already uh, huge and great. And then the Oscars and uh, came and this Oscar thing nomination. And for me, for instance, uh, for Best Picture, it's totally uh, incredible. But uh, for me, it's unreal. Uh, it's not only a nomination. I'm, I'm nominated um, aside uh, <laughs> Thelma Schoolmaker, uh, Jennifer Lame, uh, Michelle Tesoro, Kevin Tetris. They, they are gods. They are gods. They are Avengers. You know, <laughs> it's, it's like yeah. What I'm doing here, you know. Yeah, that's it's 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 another level. It's fantastic. Um, uh, again, last question I want to ask you, which is our silly question that we ask. Um, do you have a guilty pleasure? Is there something that you watch at the end of a long work day, just to unplug? That's maybe a little silly, maybe a little embarrassing, um, but just for fun to kind of relax your brain to have a good time. Uh, uh. Yes, but I think that you don't know this program. It's not a film. It's not a. It's a TV show in France uh, okay. about farmers. <laughs> about they, plumbers. Farmers, farmers uh, who are uh, looking for love for um, for uh, you know a, a love story, and they are like uh, meeting um, uh, girls that 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 are supposed to to come into the farm and to. I try uh, this life and to see if oh, okay. are, yeah you know it's a, it's a tv show really uh, relaxing for me and uh, because the, the people there are really uh, endearing you know they they are really great and <laughs> but uh, i'm not sure that i i i'm i'm, I'm uh, yeah is this is this, re is, this re is this reality tv yeah 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 it's, it's called l'amour l'amour est dans le pré L'amour est dans le pré. The, the, the love is in the, in the farm, in the, in the land. On the, on the field, yeah. Yeah, yeah in the Fantastic. French. Thank you for the translation. Thank you. Uh, that's going to be it for this week. You can check us out at filmmakeru.com or follow us on Instagram at filmmaker underscore you. I am Chad Anderson. Thank you again so much, Laurent Seneschal. Uh, and thank you so much, everyone else, for watching. <laughs>